Many plans fail, but few have backfired as miserably as the 1970s libertarian group's repeated attempts to establish independent island nations inspired by Ayn Rand, among other historic schemes that went disastrously wrong. Las Vegas real estate developer Michael Oliver, a fervent Ayn Rand fan, founded the Shady Phoenix Foundation, which attracted a motley crew of extremists and criminals, all in pursuit of creating independent libertarian countries on tropical islands. Their first attempt, the Republic of Minerva, ended in embarrassment when the King of Tonga chased them away. In an attempt to create a libertarian paradise closer to home, the Founding Fathers turned to the Bahamas, supporting a white secessionist movement by providing funds for weapons and explosives. However, their plan went awry when their chosen gunrunner betrayed them, resulting in a scandal that led to deportation and the abandonment of their dream for a libertarian Caribbean country. In their quest for a libertarian country, the Phoenix Foundation funded a South Pacific cult led by a man who called himself Moses. But their scheme backfired when nearby Papua New Guinea sent an army battalion to crush the rebellion, resulting in the Foundation's ultimate demise. Ernesto Che Guevara, a prominent Marxist revolutionary, gained fame for his role in the Cuban Revolution and his advocacy for guerrilla warfare. However, his ambitious plan to ignite a communist revolution in South America, with hopes of spreading it throughout Latin America, ended up disastrously backfiring on him. Che Guevara, once a medical student, became a renowned revolutionary after witnessing the catastrophic consequences of Guatemala's failed land reforms and the overthrow of Jacobo Arbenz's government by a CIA-backed coup in 1954, which fueled his radicalism and anti-imperialist beliefs. This experience laid the groundwork for his theory on achieving socialism through global revolution. He later joined forces with Fidel Castro in Cuba, where they successfully overthrew the corrupt Batista regime in 1959. After playing a crucial role in transforming Cuba into a communist state, Che Guevara's attempt to spark a communist revolution in Bolivia in 1966 backfired, leading to his capture and execution. The British Army introduced a new sword in the late 18th century, known as the 1796 Spadroon, which became the standard issue line regiment's officer sidearm during the Napoleonic Wars. However, this sword backfired dismally due to its numerous defects and poor design. The 1796 Spadroon was a sword that failed in every possible way, from its poorly designed hilt that was unsuitable for cutting and slashing, to its lightweight and flexible blade that couldn't even penetrate skin, and its flimsy guard and knuckle bow that provided little hand protection and often caused injury. As a British general put it, it was utterly useless and served only as a burden leading soldiers to prefer wearing dirks instead. At 10.25 a.m. on June 4, 1942, Japan was dominating the Pacific, but just five minutes later, they had effectively lost World War II due to an unfortunate turn of events during their planned invasion of Midway Island. Unbeknownst to Japan's Navy, the Americans had cracked their secret codes and had more aircraft carriers than anticipated, resulting in the Japanese sailing into an ambush with three American carriers instead of the expected one or two caught off guard. As the Japanese prepared for a second strike on Midway, they learned of nearby American carriers and hastily switched their bombs to anti-ship weapons, 
a decision that ultimately backfired as the American carriers launched their own aircraft against the unsuspecting Japanese. The American lieutenant commander's impulsive decision led to the discovery of the vulnerable Japanese fleet, catching them off guard during a crucial moment of rearming and refueling, resulting in the destruction of three out of four Japanese aircraft carriers and ultimately turning the tide in the Pacific. Inside a long forgotten room at Yale University, a shocking discovery was made in the late 1970s. Thousands of nude photos of young men with metal pins protruding from their spines, revealing a bizarre and scandalous scheme that had unfolded from the 1940s to the 1970s, as Ivy League schools like Yale, Harvard, Vassar, and Brown required their freshmen to pose nude for a study on rickets, leading to a catastrophic failure in protecting the students' privacy and the eventual burning of the photos, although some may still exist, potentially surfacing on the internet someday. Shah Muhammad II, the ruler of the Khwarezmian Empire, made the foolish decision to insult Genghis Khan, a terrifying conqueror known for his brutal tactics and massive empire. Unsurprisingly, this bold move ended up backfiring in catastrophic fashion. In 1218, Genghis Khan's attempt to establish diplomatic and trade relations with the Khwarezmian Empire backfired catastrophically when the Khwarezmian ruler not only arrested the Mongol embassy and seized their goods, but also executed the envoys and members of the earlier mission. An enraged Genghis Khan retaliated against the Khwarezmian Empire and its ruler, Shah Muhammad II, for mistreating his envoys. With a force of over 100,000 men, the Mongols launched a swift and devastating campaign that crushed Muhammad's empire by 1221. The ruler was relentlessly pursued by Genghis's top generals, Subutai and Jebe until he met his demise on a small Caspian island, abandoned and worn out. Shah Muhammad II's insult to Genghis Khan not only backfired on himself, but also had devastating consequences for his subjects, as the Mongols unleashed their brutal savagery during the invasion of the Khwarezmian Empire, resulting in the death of millions and the destruction of prosperous cities. The Boers, despite being outnumbered, had a strong start in the Second Boer War but missed a golden opportunity for an easy victory when they fell for enemy ruses and overestimated the strength of the defenders at the besieged town of Mafeking. Colonel Robert Baden Powell, the commander of Mafeking's British garrison, cleverly seized the town by tricking the townspeople into allowing his guards to protect his supplies. And when the war broke out, he found himself besieged by a much larger Boer force, but their failure to attack immediately backfired, denying them an easy victory. To deceive the Boers, Baden Powell used clever tactics such as burying boxes that he claimed were powerful landmines but were actually filled with sand and creating the illusion of having an abundance of barbed wire to deter their potential attack. Colonel Robert Baden Powell cleverly used wooden posts to create the illusion of barbed wire fences fooling the Boer watchers and allowing his men to crawl beneath the imaginary wire and continue their defense of Mafeking. The French army's introduction of the Shosha during World War I seemed promising, as it was the world's first portable automatic firearm that could be carried by a single soldier. However, due to a defective design and poor workmanship, the Shah became infamous as one of the worst firearms to be mass-produced and issued to an army. 
The Xiao Xia's detachable magazine, designed with an open side, allowed dirt and grit to enter the chamber and firing mechanism, resulting in stoppages and malfunctions. The flimsy magazines easily dented, causing jamming, while the lack of a cover on the ejection port allowed more dirt to enter and cause malfunctions. In addition, the Chao Shot suffered from overheating, misaligned sights, loose plate assemblies, and a loose bipod, making it difficult to aim and keep on target. As a result, it was gradually replaced by the M1918 Browning Automatic Rifle, BAR, before the end of WWWI. Al Mustasim, the last ruler of the Abbasid Caliphate, made a fatal mistake by underestimating the power of the Mongols and engaging in a feudal battle, which ultimately led to the downfall of his dynasty and the suffering of his people. After a period of relative calm, the Mongols, under the leadership of Genghis Khan's grandson Monke, decided to focus their efforts on the Middle East, with Hulagu leading the charge by first dismantling the notorious assassins and then setting his sights on the Abbasid Caliphate in Baghdad, demanding their submission and tribute. Al Mustasim's defiance and weakened empire proved to be a deadly combination. As the Mongols marched on Baghdad, the Islamic world did not come to its aid, and the city fell after a brutal siege, resulting in the massacre of its inhabitants and the tragic end of the Caliph, who was rolled in a carpet and trampled to death by the Mongol army. Instead of facing a trial he was bound to lose, Alcibiades fled Athens and defected to Sparta, ultimately leading to a decade of betrayals and counter-betrayals, culminating in a humiliating Athenian defeat from which the city never recovered. Alcibiades, a spoiled brat born into a wealthy family, grew up to be a dissipated young man whose self-centeredness and irresponsibility wreaked havoc on Athens, despite his gifts of brilliance and charm. In a cunning political move, Alcibiades' opponents allowed the expedition, filled with his supporters, to set sail to conquer Syracuse while the charges of desecrating statues hung over him. However, their plan to summon him back to Athens for trial after his supporters had left backfired tremendously. Alcibiades' decision to defect to Sparta and advise them on a strategy ultimately led to Athens' catastrophic defeat in Sicily, resulting in the enslavement or death of thousands of Athenians. Additionally, his actions caused the Spartans to establish a permanent base in Attica and incited a revolt against Athens in Asia Minor, but his affair with the wife of Sparta's king Agis II ultimately led to his downfall. After betraying everyone and causing chaos in Athens, Alcibiades managed to persuade the pro-democracy Athenian fleet to follow him and led them to a series of victories, turning the tide of the war. However, his triumphant return to Athens was short-lived as the Athenians quickly turned against him, leading him to flee once again. Eventually, he was murdered by the Persians, and Athens ultimately fell under the weight of the disasters caused by Alcibiades. <laughs>